During the reign of King Tut between 1333 BC and 1324 BC, the understanding of iron metallurgy or indeed the casting of such objects was very limited. Iron smelting is the extraction of usable metal from oxidized iron ores. It is vastly more difficult than smelting tin and copper. Such metals could be cold worked in simple pottery kilns and then cast into molds, a process largely accepted as being present within ancient Egyptian times. However, the smelting of iron requires hot working and can only be melted in specially designed extremely heated furnaces. It is therefore not surprising that humans only mastered iron smelting after several millennia of the Bronze Age. However, there is a pair of relics found within ancient Egypt whose sheer existence disprove the officially held chronological account of when these hardened metals were developed. Or do they? Within the ancient wrappings of the sarcophagus which contained Pharaoh Tutankhamun, two daggers were discovered. Encased in gold sheaths, they were placed there more than 3,000 years prior. One had an iron blade, and the other with a blade made of hardened gold. Yet both are not made from regular metals. Amazingly, these daggers are in fact made from metals not native to Earth. It is officially accepted that it would have been quite difficult nigh impossible for ancient civilizations to have acquired iron in pure states. So most of the pure iron found in weaponry within this mysterious culture are academically accepted as coming from quote, meteoric sources. This explanation may be easier to digest for the majority of population of Earth. However, it is not only a flawed explanation, but illogical. If this ancient Egyptian civilization which possessed knowledge we are yet to rediscover did indeed extract these alien metals from meteorites, yet largely accepted to have not been able to cast such metals, then an obvious question arises. How did they cast the metal into daggers? The official explanation offered provides no answer, as is often the case with out-of-place artifacts. A more logical scenario is that these daggers were in fact the remnants of a far older civilization a civilization responsible for the construction of ancient Egypt. A group of people visited by, or indeed traveled to, people from another world entirely. Additionally, modern advanced metallurgical analysis found that the iron dagger is not a normal meteoritic iron, but a complex, intelligent, and very strong alloy containing various amounts of nickel, chromium, and cobalt. Furthermore, the nickel content is so high, nearly 25%, it makes this alloy totally different from those made by man. The alchemy required to make such a non-rusting metal was developed many centuries, if not millennia, after King Tut's death. Just where did these daggers come from? How old could they actually be? Were they made as a gift by a race who visited Earth? Apart from our postulations, it seems no one can produce a working theory. The Mars exploration missions launched in 2003, successfully landing two rovers, Spirit and Opportunity, on the Red Planet. The mission's objective was to search for clues to pass water activity on Mars. The mission also included three previous landers, the two Viking program landers in 1976 and Mars Pathfinder probe in 1997. Both rovers were given an expected lifespan of just 90 days due to the notorious dust storms present on the surface. Spirit lasted an incredible seven years, surviving until 2010, yet mysteriously, Opportunity is still functioning to this day. This is due to several events which have become known as cleaning events, which over that last 14 years have been mysteriously cleaning the rover's solar panels. Designed to go offline during the night to save energy, it is during these hours that something or someone has been helping to keep our rovers running. Opportunity has since been given five mission extensions, which it has successfully completed. In July 2007, during the fourth mission extension, severe Martian dust storms blocked sunlight to the rover and threatened the ability of the craft's survival. However, when the dust storms lifted, they revealed that something had cleaned the rover of nearly all debris. On May 1, 2009, during its fifth mission extension, Spirit became stuck in the soft soils of Mars. 
After nearly nine months of attempts to get the rover back on track, including test rovers on Earth, NASA announced on January 26, 2010 that Spirit was retasked as a stationary science platform. Strangely, it seems, because the rover was not moving, it missed subsequent cleaning events, leading NASA to lose contact shortly after. Most recently, Opportunity has seen a surge in energy after a cleaning event in March, the Martian month coincidentally resulting in a power boost of 70% when compared with power levels at the start of this year. And now mission scientists have released a self-portrait photo of the Mars rover. When compared with the dust coverage at its worst, the difference is nothing short of dramatic. Having just survived its sixth Mars winter, thanks to the most recent cleaning event, Opportunity now has solar panels that are as dust-free as they were when they entered the Martian atmosphere. Just what exactly has been cleaning the rovers on Mars? Covert astronauts? Or maybe it's aliens? Whatever it is, we may never know.
I really couldn't imagine because I have been the team's biggest skeptic. I was kind of prepared of finding just a stone. For me, it has been a, a amazing experience, I must say. <laughs>